Look at Cecil, folks. Look how big he is. He's over two years old, and he's still growing. He's a panther, we think. Not only is Cecil a very handsome cat and a very large, muscular cat, he's also very smart. He's able to open things up, he gets into everything, and he's able to just look at things and figure them out. We have to stop filming sometimes because he's being so smart someplace in the house. Oftentimes, Tona and I will marvel at the intelligence of Cecil, and Tona will say, he's so smart. And any time I hear someone say that, I can't help but think of Forrest Gump. He's so smart, Jenny. Oh, yeah. I wonder, are there other phrases that are common phrases that are indelibly associated with a film? There's, I'll be back. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. People don't even say, I'll be, I'll be back anymore. <laughs> you have to say it in a bad Austrian accent. I'll, I'll be back. I know so many people who will follow it with a little bit of Bela Lugosi. They'll be, I'll be back. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Which like, makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. I had like two co-workers I couldn't stand right in a row. One replaced the other. And they both did the I'll be back ah 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 thing. <laughs> and if there's a chopper that needs to be gotten to, forget about it. I imagine people who do uh, medevac work here get to the chopper. They, and they say, get to the chopper. Ah mm -hmm. ah ah. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. It's May here in the basement and in the outside world as well, and that means that summer is right around the corner. And so the theme for May is summer. You and me in the summertime. I am looking forward to the summer, and I'm also looking forward to another thing that's going to happen this year, the latest Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, which features Mark Hamill. But you know, Mark Hamill hasn't just been in Star Wars movies. He's been in other movie. A little movie called Corvette, Corvette Summer. Summer. Pass it on. <laughs> they have a quote on the back here. One of Hollywood's better, quote, growing up movies, unquote. <laughs> Who said this? No one. There's, <laughs> there's not a quote. You know, one of those growing up movies, like The 400 Blows. Released in 1978, starring Mark Hamill and Annie Potts, this movie also features the Partridge family's own Danny Bonaducci, playing a character named Coots. Working titles for Corvette Summer were Stingray and The Hot One. That would be Danny Bonaducci. This could have been Fran Drescher's second appearance on our show. You'll recall that she did a brief cameo back in Saturday Night Fever, episode number 18. She also did a brief cameo in this movie, which was left on the cutting room floor. Oh, Mr. Sheffield, I have my scene was cut. Oh. <laughs> Immaculate. That's right. I've still got the nanny knocking around somewhere in my brain. <laughs> yes. There's other facts that could be there, mm -hmm. but they're not. Yeah, I think about all the math I don't know. <laughs> Plenty of stuff about computers and car repair. <laughs> things that would actually be handy. Oh, no, but I know the names of all three waitresses at Mel's Diner. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of things to do in the summertime, but whatever you do, it's important to do it with your friends. You and I are friends. Yeah, in a way. Hey, Tona's a friend, too. Yes, definitely. Look at us. Three friends. <gasps> oh, good lord. Your favorite candy bar. I just ate a Three Musketeers bar upstairs in the kitchen when you were getting set down here. <laughs> and this is the fun size. We're going to have fun today. Vroom, vroom. Drive your hot rod over to the old leather couch and settle in in your bucket seats as we watch Mark Hamill in Corvette Summer. <laughs> You could give one of those to me if you if you felt like it. Yes, if I felt like it. Hmm. Good point. Mark Hamill is somewhere in this vehicle. Will he escape? <laughs> Mr. McGrath has taken his high school auto shop class to the junkyard. They're there to salvage a car that they're going to refurbish in their class. Kenny Dantley spots a Corvette that's about to go to the crusher. <laughs> Come on back here! What this is? It's a Corvette! 3PO! 3PO! Where could he be? <laughs> and he turns off the crusher just in time and saves the old heap. Kenny? Hi, Mom. I hope someday the bastards won't kill you. In South Park. Oh. That joke didn't pass the couch test. Nope. <laughs> That's not gonna be in the show. <laughs> He's a poor kid. His mom is kind of a spent 
piece of jet trash, as Tom Waits might say. <laughs> Most of you will find yourselves on the plus side of the bell curve at midterm. How can most people be on the plus side of a bell curve? <laughs> Half the people would be on... Okay, never mind. He's really bad at school. His name is Dominus? Kenny Dominus? <laughs> Body shop's the only thing he's got in this world. A candy-colored clown they call the Sandman. Tiptoes to my garage every night. Kenny and the rest of the class go to town working on this machine, bringing it back to its former glory. This vet is not yet bitchin'. It is approaching bitchin'. The class restores the beautiful Corvette Stingray. The Corvette has achieved maximum bitchin'. Someday a band like the Dead Milkmen will <laughs> sing a song similar to the, what? Fuck it. <laughs> but how does it handle on the road? They take it out to the main drag. Everyone gets a turn driving. Even Coots. Coots gets behind the wheel. You know, that's the greatest car I ever saw. Thanks. Did you ever think about going pro? Did you ever think about kissing another boy <laughs> on the mouth? Boy, you know, if a guy did that to me, I would never tell anybody. I would be so ashamed, it would just be his and my secret. <laughs> Coots is given... <laughs> Coots is told that he has to go get some... Coke. <laughs> and the car is stolen. Oh, Coots. I traded the car for this case of magic soda. I didn't want no Cokes. Who said I was thirsty? I said I wanted cocaine! Wait. Well, now the coke errand was completely pointless. The cops say, car like that, it is gone, you're never gonna see it again. When that car's lost, so is a little bit of Kenny's soul. He's gotta get it back. Puts up signs all around town. I've seen that car before. I saw it in Las Vegas. In a casino. Superior mags, mercury tubes, Gabriel shocks. Ed. Yes, I checked the shocks. <laughs> Off the boy goes! to the land of delights. I know how you can get to Vegas, kid. Build yourself a Corvette. First he gets picked up by a bunch of Mexicans. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> but they're going too slow, man. How many parsecs is this taking him? <laughs> but then he gets picked up by a van driven by Van Nessa. Oh, wait a minute. We got one. <laughs> I'm a hooker for Christ's sake. You mean like a prostitute? No, like General Hooker from the Civil War. <laughs> She's going off to Las Vegas to prostitute herself, because that things is possible in Vegas. And Kenny starts searching every casino he can find. He runs afoul of some consmen. <laughs> he runs afoul of some con artists who steal his wallet. But luckily he meets a happy-go-lucky fellow at a hot dog stand. Oh, someone showed up from a Roger Corman movie. And who treats him to a meal. I think it could happen to me. It's... Makes you believe in the almighty. And gremlins. I believe in gremlins a lot. <laughs> I also believe that someday in the future, I'm going to open up a gun store. And then I will be murdered by a robot. Oh, he's in Terminator 2? He's in Terminator 1. Wow. That joke also did not pass the couch test. <laughs> he finally sees his car, but it's not his. It's just a red Datsun. That ain't no Corvette. He's about to give up hope. La Calife. <laughs> That's Spanish for the Caliph. By chance, he sees the car. Oh, there it goes! And he chases after it. But he doesn't catch it. Kenny's back at his U-Haul crash pad when Vanessa's van pulls up. I only been in Vegas a week and I got all kinds of chlamydia. She needs to use the John. She's been beat up by a John. Are you got a girlfriend? No, just a car. Are we gonna get to see what I think we're gonna get to see? Annie's pots? <laughs> <laughs> she wants to make love to Kenny. Kenny is not into it. No, I don't I don't know why. The next day. <laughs> Vanessa demands that he give her some money because she let him sleep in her van last night. He says, fine, take my two dollars. Get out, get out of my life. The guy who owns the filling station says, hey, I like your style. I like the way you screamed at that woman. How about I give you a job? Vanessa comes back and picks Kenny up. Apparently all is forgiven. And they see the car again. They chase after it, but they don't catch it. 
Stolen car. That's a stolen car. Okay, so then what's the problem here? You uh, take the wrong pill this morning? Did you take the red pill <laughs> and stay in your reality or the blue pill and came to this one? You helped me with the car. Oh, the car. The car, the car. That would have been another good title for this movie. Oh, the car, the car, the car. I'm sorry. The trouble with you. Oh, hey! Focus! I just wish Chekhov's love gun would go off. <laughs> Vanessa and Kenny finally make love. Bang. Normally I only kiss women before swinging them across a crevasse on a weird space station. <laughs> Kenny's walking around. He sees a guy with a hot rod. Hey, mister, have you seen this car? No, I haven't seen that car. Oh. My. God! <laughs> He's a low good crook who arranged the stealing of the car. This kid might be onto us. We gotta paint that car. Painting the car, that's not gonna fool Kenny, because when he sees it at the car wash, he says, This is my car. And then the guy from Blade Runner comes out and says, this, No, it's not your car, it's my car. I'm driving away. Bye bye, little buddy. Wake up. Time to die. Kenny chases after him. He's going after, he's going after a a a a a a a a a Just calm down, slow down, <laughs> think about what you want to say, and then say it. He steals a bike. Ladri de bicicleta. Faster. No, seriously, you have to go faster if you're going to catch that car. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Kenny manages to keep up with the Corvette. They make it back to the garage. They capture Kenny and they lock him in a room. He submerges himself in a big bucket of oil. If you start singing Mammy right now, I will <laughs> kill you. The oil ruse is clever except for one thing, footprints. It was then Jesus was carrying him. This thug chases down Kenny. There's a little fight and he's rescued by his Mexican friend. You know they show up again who takes him back to Vanessa. Kenny gets a hose job from his girlfriend, Vanessa. Scrubs him off. Boy, are you stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Kenny is despondent, though. He's never going to get that car back. Mr. McGrath shows up in Vegas. Hey, you can help me get the car. I've been there. I know you have. Silverado Auto Body. I even know the name of the guy that runs the show. His name's Wayne Lowry. He's a former student of mine, class of 71. And he's your father. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGrath has a shocking confession to make. Being a teacher, you don't get paid much in this country, so I need to figure out ways to make more money. You stole the Corvette? That's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> don't be mad at me, because I can get you a job with Lowry. He's going to pay you so much money that you won't need money anymore. <laughs> That's not really how that works, but... And you get to do what you were born to do. How many people get that chance? I'm not sure if Mr. McGrath is Obi-Wan, Vader, or Emperor at this point. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll work for Lowry, my enemy. He's making $850 a week. Look at me, Joe Slick. Come on. I'm your pimp now. <laughs> <laughs> and they go on a shopping spree, and they stay in a fancy hotel. We're gonna sleep on a clamshell tonight. Well, what about your car? That was the MacGuffin of the whole movie, man. We gotta get it. I don't care about that car. That car is just a thing. What's more important is that my life is going somewhere. Vanessa's very unhappy at this epiphany that Kenny just had. I can have any car I want now. Lamborghini. 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 The next day... You're a car thief. Take a look at that back window and you tell me how much bullshit you want to eat. I'd prefer not to eat any, but if you're offering... That is her handwriting. <laughs> did you finally went and did it, huh? A hooker. The real thing. Well, where do you get off? I used to get off in your van until you sold it. <laughs> Kenny's doing his job, but he's sad. He's wrapped up in his work. Don't forget to turn off the lights and lock up. Remember like we locked you up against your will. Remember? Remember when we did that? That criminal act? Remember? Are you there, Carr? It's me, Kenny. <laughs> I'll just stay here all night repainting the car. Wayne's wheels, Wayne's wheels, party time, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Said Wayne's wheels. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I, I did see that. The joke has made it past the couch. <laughs> yes! I'm gonna steal the car. Red Five is standing by. <laughs> Beats up a few of them. Ow! <laughs> You've been enameled. Enhameled. 
<laughs> he goes, picks up Vanessa, says, come on, we're going back to Los Angeles. What happened in Vegas is now no longer in Vegas. <laughs> However, Lowry is in hot pursuit, and there is an epic car chase across the Nevada desert. Drives past Walter White burying oil drums full of cash. <laughs> There's only one way to end this car chase, and that is with a game of chicken. And you know who the biggest chicken turns out to be? Lowry. He cracks up his car. <laughs> Wayne heads back to Los Angeles. Kenny. Bah! He pulls into the quad of his old high school, pulls the fire alarm, and says, Hey, look what I did. The principal says, Well, we have something for a boy like you. It's called a diploma. Vanessa says, That diploma's mine for some reason. I don't want to be with a guy like you. Says, Is it because I don't have a Corvette? Come on, kiss me. Fast cars, pretty girls, Las Vegas, Corvette summer. It wasn't really Fast and the Furious now, was it? It was eventually Fast and eventually Furious. I was under the impression that this was going to be a cheap sex movie. It's neither of those things. No. The production values are pretty good, and as a movie, it's not bad. It's a very dark world that he's living in. Everyone he meets is corrupt. Other than the Mexicans. The Mexicans who pick him up are nice guys. It's a world of... Thieves and, and hookers. The truly corrupt person is Mr. McGrath. Mm -hmm. He is Kenny's Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan turns out to be the bad guy. Which I believe was originally going to be the plot twist of Empire Strikes Back, that he's the one who killed Anakin's Really? Catalog. That would have made Empire too dark. Empire's dark enough as it is. A movie called Corvette Summer, you expect it's going to be like American Graffiti with boobs. Yeah. But American Graffiti is more of a teen movie and more of a car movie than this is. Yeah, well... Uh, and this has car in the title. <laughs> American Graffiti has the specter of Vietnam. This one is the ghost of Vietnam, where it's like, uh, American Malays. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if this movie happened before or after the accident that mm -hmm. he had on the road, uh, but I think it's after, because he's looking pretty rough. At times, he looks ghoulish. He's not looking like a teen idol at this no, point. No, no, he is not. He really wasn't in Star Wars, either. He's more of an everyman. He's not someone that's going to make the girls swoon. So that's Harrison Ford's job. Or the freaky girls who are into Peter Cushing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch Corvette Summer thinking, oh, this movie it influenced a lot. One book and movie I think it influenced was the movie Christine. They're both about these loser kids, the bad at school. They both find these old cars, which are kind of going to be destroyed, and they become obsessed with them. And Stephen King probably watched Corvette Summer and thought, what if the car killed people? When you were in high school, did you ever take a vocational class? No, I didn't. In junior high school, I had to. And I was just so bad at everything. Because my hands didn't, w weren't there yet. All they wanted to do was masturbate. <laughs> well, hello, Mom. Uh, <laughs> did that uh, not pass the desk test? <laughs> Kenny was really into shop class. Where do you think this movie would have gone to if he had decided to maybe don't play? You can't steal Tartuffe and take it to <laughs> Vegas. Final thoughts on Corvette Summer. I am not a fan of cars. But I find myself kind of being a fan of this movie. True dat. If you want to watch a summer movie to celebrate the coming summer, you could watch Corvette Summer. You could. We'll drive your mean machine down the highway and take the exit ramp to our website, welcome to the basement show.com. You can see every episode we've ever made, and there are PayPal donation buttons you can donate to support our show. You can make a one time donation by hitting donate. You can make a rolling monthly donation by hitting subscribe. One of our recent donors is Underland Film and Media Productions, who says, I am in hardcore love with this show. Please continue making it for at least five more centuries. We'll try. Not a century less. If you want to find out who the rest of our donors are and to find out the contents of our mailbag, you should watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. But you know what? Unboxing isn't just about opening mail and saying people's names. There's so much more. There's other things that happen on there. We have outtakes from previous episodes. We answer viewer questions. Uh, we little walks down memory lane there, too. <laughs> it's a good time. And now it's time for scene -na 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 -na. it Scene it Summer is a time to get outside, but sometimes when the temperature gets a little too high, you crave the darkness and the air conditioned comfort of a theater. And so our theme for today's scene it is at the theater. Truth Seeker asks, <laughs> I love the man who wasn't there, which doesn't get enough love. Might as well ask if you've seen it. Seen it. I saw it at the Orpheum Theater on State Street. This is actually a scene it own it for me. I own this one. I also own it. I think it goes on a little bit too long. 
I think that if they would have trimmed 15 minutes from that movie, it would fall into the automatic classic of them. You got to give them the time to demonstrate all those haircuts. <laughs> Probably my favorite shot in all Coen Brothers movies. There's the point where the police detective offers him a cigarette and he raises his hand up to show that he has a cigarette. <laughs> Shelby Fisher writes, I would love to hear your thoughts on Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. I personally could not stand the film. Brad Pitt's Grating accent made me want to punch myself in the face. Don't punch yourself in the face. Seen it. Well, if you want to punch yourself in the face, who's going to stop you? Seen it. I think I saw this at Sundance. Sundance 608 here in Madison, the first Sundance theater in the country. Take that, San Francisco. Brad Pitt did not bother me. It's a cartoony performance. It's really more of a Coen Brothers performance than a Tarantino performance, but still, it works. Yeah. And the scene that I feel is the centerpiece of that movie in that basement where the tension keeps building and building and building. Or you you can like actually feel your your bones cracking. It's like, oh my God, I have two elbows right now because of this scene. This scene is going to give me the bends after it's over. He builds tension beyond the point that you think could possibly be built. And then he keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Nick McCabe writes, Ghostbusters, McCarthy and Wig give solid performances, but I love watching Kate McKinnon. Seen it. This was a very controversial movie. There was a lot of hoo-ha surrounding it. And when I finally got to see it, I was surprised at how not bad it was and how not great it was. Fine. It was a fine movie. Anyone who doesn't like this movie because there's female Ghostbusters can go to hell. You're an idiot and you have problems probably with your mother or a number of ex-girlfriends. The problem with this movie is that it just wasn't good enough. Yeah. You have this murderer's row of talent and the script wasn't there. It had a lame villain. It's forgettable. When the Ghostbuster who comes back to make his cameo in the movie that you like the most is Ernie Hudson... There's something wrong with your movie. <laughs> I thought the Dan Aykroyd cameo was pretty great. Yeah, but it was so Aykroydy. He is Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> he can be forgiven for being Aykroydy. If you look at Ivan Reitman's career, his crowning moment was Ghostbusters. I wanted Paul Feig's crowning moment to be the Ghostbusters as well, too, and it wasn't. Joe Stevens writes, Just wondering, fellas, if you've seen Grease. As a kid, I always thought it had something no other romantic film had. I've got chills. They're multiplying. Seen it. Seen it. I think the thing that this movie has that no other romantic movie has is the term pussy wagon. (laughs) Kill Bill also has that. That's a romantic (laughs) movie. I think... That the only thing that this romantic movie has that no other one does is Sid Caesar. Unsung hero of that movie as the gym coach. Everyone loves Grease. There's there's no way to stop the movie Grease. There's no fighting Grease. You can say it's like, well, Sandy doesn't make the right decision at the end of the movie. And Danny doesn't meet her halfway. And she's like, I need to smoke cigarettes and put out. Who cares? <laughs> it's Grease. I'm not one to frequent karaoke, but the few times relatively in my life that I have been to karaoke, it really has killed any love I have for Grease. Anytime two uh- idiots get up to sing the Tell Me More, Tell Me More <laughs> song, I just want to kill myself. So that's an instance where something can really be ruined by shitty people. Best thing I ever saw at karaoke was a really horrible singer singing Everybody Loves a Clown. (laughs) And it was the funniest thing. And the guy knew it. He was just diving into the deep end. I can't swim. Isn't it funny how I'm drowning? That's seen it. And that's our show. So uh, we're done here? Yeah. Okay. Amazed. He's been so quiet this entire time. He's been here this whole time? Yeah, I know. We were talking really loud earlier. Hey, don't get such a sour look on your face. (laughs) His go-to expression is concern. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we hope you had a good time celebrating summer with us here and the baby. And uh, come back next time. There's going to be a different movie that has to do with summer. And look at how warm it is here in Wisconsin. He's got his, like, 2005 hip-hop jacket (laughs) He's Tracy Jordan. (laughs) Bye-bye. See you later. I got something to cheer you up. Zip. Wang. Ow, ow, ow.